Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial where we are going to be talking about the muscles of the neck and the muscles of the shoulder girdle. So firstly we will highlight these muscles in pictures and move after that to dissection. And in the next tutorial we will remove the foreign completely and look at the muscles in details. Before we start dissection let's uh, look at the muscles which we are going to dissect in this video and as you can see here we're looking at the right side of the horse after removing the skin and the cutaneous muscles so here we can see some of the muscles of the neck and some of the muscles of the shoulder and let's start with the first one highlighted in blue here the trapezius muscle the trapezius muscle has two parts the cervical part and the thoracic part the cervical part of the trapezius muscle originate from the knuckle ligament and inserts to the spine of the scapula, which is located here in this area, while the thoracic part of the trapezius muscle originates from the spinous process of the thoracic vertebra and inserts to the spine of the scapula too. The next muscle which we can see here is the rhomboid muscle. The rhomboid muscle located under the trapezius muscle and has also two parts, the cervical part which we can see highlighted in green here, the thoracic part located under the trapezius in this area here. The cervical part of the rhomboid muscle originates also from the knuckle ligament here and inserts to the medial surface of the cartilage of the scapula or scapular cartilage which we can find in this area here. The next muscle highlighted now is the splenius muscle. The splenius muscle originates from the knuckle ligament, from the knuckle ligament, from the spinous processes of the uh, T3 to T5, and inserts to different regions, including the skull, as you can see here, uh, C1, which is the atlas, C3, C4, C5, and um, so here we're talking about the cervical vertebra number three, uh, number one to five, but not number two in the horse. The next muscle is the ventral serrated muscle. The ventral serrated muscle has also two parts: the cervical part, with which we can see uh, highlighted in, in this picture here. The thoracic part originates from the ribs and located under this muscle and under the forelimb. So we cannot see the thoracic part, but we can see part of the cervical part of the ventral serrated muscle. So the cervical part of the ventral serrated muscle originates from the transverse processes of the uh, cervical vertebra and inserts like that one of the I mean the, the, the thoracic part to the serrated face. Serrated face is specific area on the medial surface of the scapula. This is the insertion of both the cervical part and the thoracic part of the ventral serrated muscle. The next muscle which we can see here is the omotransverse muscle. The omotransverse muscle originates uh, from um, the transverse processes of the first four cervical vertebra and inserts actually in the horse into the fascia on the surface of the shoulder region in this area here. Uh, as you can see this is uh, a part of the omotransferous muscle. Of course in other animals the insertion area of the omotransferous muscle is the acromion, acromion of the scapula. But here in the horse, there is no acromion. That's why this muscle inserts to the fascia here of the shoulder region. The next muscle highlighted in red here is the latissimus dorsi muscle. The latissimus dorsi or the broad muscle of, of, of the thorax originates from the thoracolumbar fascia. This structure we can, hear, we can see here and inserts into the there's major tuberosity located on the medial surface of the humerus. The next muscle is the supraspinous or supraspinatus muscle. The supraspinatus muscle originates from the supraspinatus fossa of the scapula and inserts to the greater tubercle of the humerus. 
while behind the spine of the scapula we have the infraspinous muscle but we cannot see the infraspinous muscle here because it's covered with this muscle the deltoid muscle so the deltoid muscle which has two parts in other animals has here just one part which is the scapular part the scapular part originates from the spine of the scapula as you can see here and from the outside surface of the infraspinous muscle and serves to the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus the other part which named in other animals a chromial part of the deltoid muscle is absent here because there is no acromion as we mentioned before the next muscle is the omohyoid muscle this muscle originates from the deep fascia medial to the scapula or medial to the shoulder joint there in this area and originate also from the deep surface of the spinatus and subclavius muscles so this is the subclavius muscles and inserts to the hyoid bone this muscle is extremely important as in this area it moves exactly between the external jugular vein and the common carotid artery here we can see the external jugular vein this big vein here and more deeply we can see here part of the common carotid artery next to the common carotid artery there is another very important structure called the vagosympathetic trunk in this area as we mentioned this muscle moves exactly between the external jugular vein and the, the common carotid artery and protect the common carotid artery if you want to take blood or to inject medication into the external jugular vein as we all know that this area here is the best area for blood collection from the external jugular vein the next muscle highlighted in yellow here is the triceps muscle from the name the triceps muscle has three parts or three heads this one is the lateral head of the triceps muscle this is the long head of the triceps muscle and from the, in the medial side we can see the medial head of the triceps muscle all three heads comes together and inserts to the uh, olecranon of the anna the next muscle located just cranial to the scapula here is the subclavius muscle the subclavius muscle is very developed in the horse is less developed in bovine and is absent in carnivores the subclavius muscle originates from the cartilage of the first four ribs and inserts to the surface of the spinatus muscle so here we remove the skin completely under the skin directly we can see the cutaneous muscles including this big muscle the cutaneous tronchi or the cutaneous muscle of the trunk the fiber direction is called dorsally here in this region we have another cutaneous muscle uh, the omobrachial muscle the omobrachial muscle the name comes from the region so omo is shoulder and brachial is the area where we have the brachium or the humerus the omobrachial muscle as you can see here originate from the thoracic fascia the superficial fascia in this area and extends down to the fascia of the forelimb let's move toward the neck and the head uh, looking for the cutaneous muscles here ventrally we can uh, find this uh, very flat muscle uh, the cutaneous muscle of the neck or cutaneous coli is very flat located ventral protect or hold the other structures here at the caudal angle of the lojo or mandible we can see the cutaneous muscle of the face or the facial cutaneous muscle now let's zoom in here again this is the cutaneous muscle of the face here we can find another muscle this is the barotido auricular muscle if we move uh, the facial cutaneous muscle and the barotido auricular muscle to the side here we can see the 
parotid gland so the parotid gland is located under these muscles exactly between the two uh, veins uh, which uh, come from this vein this is the external jugular vein the first branch uh, the maxillary vein here and the other one uh, the lingofacial vein exactly between these two veins we can find the parotid gland now let's look one more time uh, here do you remember the name of this muscle this is the omobrachial muscle exactly under the omobrachial muscle here we can see the cervical part of the trabecius muscle if you remember we say it originates from the knuckle ligament and inserts to the spine of the scapula so this is the trabecius muscle more ventrally here we have the omotransferzarius muscle the omotransferzarius muscle um, originate from the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra and inserts to the fascia because there is no acromion. More ventrally here we can see the brachiocephalic muscle. And now let's move to this side. Here we can see the cervical part of the trabecius muscle and here is the thoracic part of the trabecius muscle. Both of them uh, inserts to the spine of the scapula. Caudally, caudal to the forelimb here, we can see the latissimus dorsi. So now let's move the cervical part of the trapezius muscle up, so to be able to see the more or the deeper muscles. Here on the scapula, lateral surface of, on, the, on the scapula, here we can see the supraspinatus muscle. The supraspinatus muscle, as we mentioned before, originates from the uh, fossa, from the supraspinatus fossa, uh, and inserts to the greater tubercle of the humerus. Caudally, here we have the deltoid muscle, the deltoid muscle um, located on the infraspinatus and inserts to the deltoid tuberosity. Here, cranial to the scapula, we can see the subclavius muscle is very developed in the horse and some anatomists, you know, consider this muscle as a part of the pectoral muscles and name it as clavicular part of the pectoral muscle. This muscle here is the omotransversarius muscle, originates from the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and inserts to the lateral surface of the shoulder region because there is no acromion. More deeper here we have the omohyoid muscle. The omohyoid muscle, do you remember? We say that in the cranial part of the neck uh, moves between the external jugular vein and the common carotid artery and protect the common carotid artery in this area. Here we can find uh, the rest of the omotransversarius muscle fuses to the brachiocephalic muscle. In the angle between the scapula and the humerus here we have the triceps muscle uh, including the long head. This is the long head of the triceps muscle. Laterally we have the lateral head of the triceps muscle. Here under the trabecius muscle we can find the rhomboid muscle. This is the cervical part of the rhomboid muscle. Here this is the splenius muscle. Splenius muscle toward the head. This big muscle is part of the serrated muscle. This is the cervical uh, uh, part of the ventral serrated muscle originate from the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra and inserts to the serrated face of the scapula. Here allow me please to mention this muscle with the fiber, fiber direction caudoventrally. This is the external oblique abdominal muscle. Uh, between the ribs uh, we can see the external intercostal muscle. The external intercostal muscle is one of the inspiratory muscles. 
so finally so did we forget any muscle yeah it looks like there is a small muscle here it's a flat muscle located on the long head of the triceps the brachii or triceps muscle this is the tensor muscle of the antibrachial fascia is very flat and inserts to the antibrachial fascia distally